Welcome to Natural Genius. My name is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. I'm the editor of naturalnews.com, and I'm the director of the Natural News Forensic Food Labs. During my extensive research in the uh, mass spectrometry laboratory, that's the Natural News Forensic Food Lab, where we run ICPMS instrumentation that's inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, or just called mass spec, um, I've uncovered a blueprint, really a code, almost a, a hidden code, you might call it, for substantially enhancing cognitive function. Uh, taking a brain that is functioning at a suboptimal level and really maximizing its performance to take it to levels that generally would be considered genius levels in society. Now, as far as my own intelligence goes, you know, I just feel blessed to be a human being with the natural gifts that we all have. I mean, we're all very much the same. We are almost identical biologically. Our, our skulls and heads are basically the same size. Our brain mass is basically the same size. Um, why does uh, the brain of one person seem to function better than the brain of another? Now, this is a question that society has been asking for a very, very long time. And some of the answers we already know. For example, we know that if a child is poisoned with lead, that they will have lowered IQs. That is well documented throughout the scientific literature. No question about it. That's why they banned lead in paint. I think what that ban was in the 19, what was it, early 1970s, I believe? Mid 1970s? So they banned that because children were eating the paint and then they were suffering from low IQs and they were having problems in school and so on and so forth. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of study about certain contaminants such as lead on cognitive function but there hasn't been much study on what kind of elements or minerals can substantially boost cognitive function. That is an area of research that needs to be pursued with a lot more due diligence, but I think I've got an early blueprint to what works and what doesn't work. Now, just to let you know, um, what you're about to hear here is completely unique. No one's ever studied this in, in the way I have. No one has ever put this information out like this. Uh, what this is, is uh, observations that I've made in the laboratory looking at the elemental analysis and concentrations of elements in different types of foods, superfoods, dietary supplements, herbs, uh, beverages, and so on. So when I run the lab, I can very easily see concentrations of, uh, for example, magnesium, aluminum, selenium, arsenic, molybdenum, copper, uh, uh, lead, cadmium, even things like tungsten, uranium, strontium, and cesium, uh, the last three of those being elements that have radioactive isotopes. Um, and I've done extensive research into blocking the absorption of radioactive isotopes, which is how I came up with the patent pending supplement called Cesium Eliminator. And I'm also the developer of a product called Heavy Metals Defense, which uses uh, an ion exchange technology based on natural uh, natural materials from the natural world, which have a very specific affinity for binding with and capturing certain toxic heavy metals during digestion. Now, if you asked me five years ago, could I have done that? I would have said, no way. What are you talking about? I didn't run a laboratory at that time. I didn't have a degree in chemistry. Um, I had a strong background in software technology, but I didn't know any, any, anything about atomic spectroscopy or mass spec instrumentation. Um, in, in about the last year, I came to realize that something was working better in my own brain. Um, and I, I really was curious about what that was because I found that my memory was, was substantially improved. I was able to learn languages more quickly. I currently speak a fair amount of conversational Mandarin Chinese as well as conversational Spanish. Um, and I was able to learn and remember languages very quickly. And I was able to develop two patent pending uh, formulas one of which, cesium eliminator, has the potential to save millions and millions of lives and uh, in a nuclear catastrophe or a nuclear war scenario. And I began to realize, you know, something is working better in my brain. What is it? What, what have I been doing that's working? And as I began to look at my own diet, dietary habits and supplement habits, and also looking at the data of what I was seeing in the, in the supplements and in the foods, uh, I, I began to, well, actually, let me back up just a little bit. <laughs> the, 
the first thing I did when I started to set up the, uh, the food laboratory is I started analyzing all of my foods, everything that I was eating for toxic heavy metals. And I found shocking levels of lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, in, in or mostly lead and cadmium, in some of the supplements that I was taking. I found high levels of lead in certain cacao powders, for example. I found that organic, certified organic rice protein was contaminated with lead, cadmium, and tungsten, which is another uh, heavy metal. Uh, I, I was actually the first researcher in the world to identify tungsten uh, in, in rice protein. And to go public with this, Dr. Oz had me on his show to uh, share this information with the world. And we caused such a wave that the protein industry changed their practices to really clean up their raw materials and reduce toxic heavy metal levels in their products. But my goal with this was to clean up my own diet. Just clean it up. I wanted to get all the lead, cadmium, mercury out of my diet. And then I wanted to share those results with the public to help the public you know, natural news readers especially, to clean up their diets as well. Because we know that these metals are harmful. There's no nutritive uh, benefit or need for lead. You know, lead's not a vitamin or mineral. You don't, you don't have like a daily lead minimum intake requirement. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Lead is toxic. Mercury is toxic in every dose. There is no such thing as a safe dose of mercury. Uh, keep that in mind the next time you get a flu shot because there is still 25 micrograms of mercury in um, a flu shot, by the way, um, even though that's only half a mil, half a mil of, of uh, flu shot, there's still a lot of mercury in there. Um, my lab tested the flu lavel vaccine at 51 parts per million mercury, given uh, 51 parts per million times 0 0.5 milliliters comes to about 25.5 micrograms of mercury. That's what you get injected into your body uh, when you take a flu shot. So keep that in mind. But I knew that all these metals were toxic, so I really made an effort to get them out of my diet. As I did that, I identified foods that were high in lead and uh, high in cadmium, high in mercury, and so on. I got them out of my diet. I began to notice a substantial change. I also began to supplement a couple of things that I will reveal in this course. Uh, one of them is selenium, by the way. And as I began to supplement these healthy minerals and eliminate the toxic heavy metals, my brain cognitive function really dramatically improved to the point where... Uh, I was able to rapidly learn new things. Um, since that time, for example, I became uh, an aircraft pilot. Um, I, I decided to study flight training, and I was able to absorb it just extremely quickly. And it's very, it's very, very technical, by the way, to fly as a pilot. Even uh, not just VFR, but IFR-rated pilots uh, go through an extensive amount of training, and I was able to just pick it up very, very quickly. In fact, I soloed, for those of you who are pilots listening, I, I soloed my first flight at 15 hours. And uh, amazing, amazing, well, not so amazing, but I didn't crash, so <laughs> I'm still here. But uh, I, I learned flight training. I've learned other skills. I have developed other things that are going to be coming out next year that you'll hear about. So uh, I'm not saying any of this to, to toot my own horn. I really have zero interest in that. I don't think, I don't think my goats would be impressed uh, I live on a ranch with goats, five, five goats and, and a bunch of chickens and dogs. I don't think my goats would be impressed, so it doesn't matter to me to be saying this to you uh, from an ego point, uh, viewpoint. I'm sharing this with you to say that I've experienced the benefits of what I'm about to tell you and that they are very, very real and that they awaken your brain, that when, when you follow this protocol that I'm going to share with you, you will, it's almost like the, the cobwebs are being cleared away from your brain. You can now uh, study and learn very rapidly. You'll be able to remember things better. You'll be able to have conceptual understanding. High level concepts will suddenly make sense very, very easily. And even if you had trouble in the past with an academic area of study, maybe going back to high school or college, you had trouble with chemistry or physics or geology. Or, or geography, for that matter, or, or history, or whatever you studied, you will probably now be able to go back and very quickly absorb that. Uh, even, even subjects like calculus, for example, which um, I remember struggling with calculus in high school. Um, gosh, I don't even teach calculus in high school anymore, but um, now calculus looks very, very easy to me. So as you get older, it doesn't mean your brain has to go down. In fact, if you follow the protocol that I'm sharing here in this course, your brain function can actually uh, substantially improve. 
And I also believe that this protocol, although I don't yet have scientific proof of this, I believe this protocol can substantially help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, again, I don't have proof of that, but I have some very strong clues, and I have a lot of uh, substantiating information that would point us in that direction while calling for additional study. Um, and just, just before I get started here, uh, the, the real summary of what I'm going to reveal is very simple. It's really just two basic concepts. The first concept is to stop poisoning your brain. It makes a lot of sense, right? But people do poison their brains every single day in a multitude of very damaging ways. But the second concept is to enhance your cognitive function with the, the intake of the proper nutrients, specifically certain minerals that I'm going to talk about, that allow your, your neurons to make better connections. And if you think about your brain, it is really a, a, a literal neural network. Your brain is a network of synapses and neurons that are communicating with each other in a way that even modern science doesn't quite comprehend. Many people believe the brain is a holographic uh, internal transmission device. Some people believe it is a, a, an energetic receiver and transmitter, actually receiving some kind of information or signals from a non-material source. But we don't even have to get into that possibility. All we have to do is focus on the, 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 the bioneurology of it and how we can support that using proper nutrition. But the truth is, the better your synapses fire, uh, the, the, the more um, adaptable your brain becomes and the more quickly you can learn and remember. Now, your brain has a, a, a very unique feature called neuroplasticity. The neuroplasticity describes the ability of your brain neurons to realign, reconfigure themselves based on uh, the needs and the inputs from the environment. And a great example of this is if someone is born with sight uh, and the ability to hear and the ability to smell and touch and so on, all of their normal traditional senses intact, uh, their brain develops in a way that balances the processing of those external senses. But if that person then loses their ability to, let's say, uh, see, they become uh, visually impaired or blind uh, due to, what, let's say, an accident of some kind, um, the part of their brain that was dedicated to processing the visual information, the visual cortex of the brain, is then re realigned, you might say, to then uh, process other information with greater intensity. For example, uh, many of the neurons that were previously used to process visual information might now be used to process auditory information. And this is why people who lose their sight then become more acutely aware of their other senses. It's a common phenomenon among those who are visually impaired. Uh, and it, it demonstrates the neuroplasticity of the brain, and this neuroplasticity allows you to learn. It allows the brain to also bypass areas that are damaged. So the, the brain can actually, in, in essence, reroute its circuitry so that uh, an area that, that is damaged from physical trauma or, let's say, a tumor or even a stroke that causes blood loss to one area of the brain, uh, that area can then be bypassed and the functions that that area of the brain was handling can then be uh, shared by other areas. And this is why people who have strokes and suffer, for example, motor coordination loss can recover from that and they can then have uh, other areas of the brain that can relearn motor coordination skills, such as speaking, for example, or walking, or even tying your own shoes, for example. You can relearn those using other areas of your brain. So this is the amazing thing about the brain is that it is, it is a, a, a holographic neural network which is a generalist, uh, highly neuroplastic <laughs> organ, you might say. By generalist, I mean that the neurons are, uh, are not limited to functioning in just one area. Your neurons can function in almost any area. Neurons that are used for motor coordination could also be used to help process language, for example, uh, or, or to process visual information or auditory information. It's the same basic neuron structure, in other words. So... Even though I know that Western um, compartmentalized, rational, um, <laughs> materialistic uh, doctors and scientists like to say that, oh, this section of the brain is used to process vision, and this section over here, or this quadrant over here is used for this and that, uh, it's, not a, it's not actually that rigid. Um, a, a normal, healthy brain will tend to organize itself in that way, but it, 
it can be organized in many, many different ways that those reductionist type of doctors and scientists would not recognize. For, for example, uh, there are people, uh, adults living today, who have no brain. They uh, were born with a, a specific kind of defect that uh, filled their skull with mostly fluid, leaving only a very thin layer of, of neurons on the, in, the, the very inner layer of their skull. So imagine, um, imagine a, a layer of neurons just a few millimeters thick inside the skull with most, most of the brain actually filled with fluid containing no brain matter or virtually no brain matter whatsoever. Obviously, they still have a brain stem and so on, but the, 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 the upper cortex of the brain is not present. Um, these people are fully functioning adults. They, they are successful individuals. They learned in school just like everybody else. They were no different than anybody else, and yet they did not have over 95% of the brain matter that other people have, and yet they were not retarded. They were not impaired in any way, and in fact, many of them didn't even know that they had this condition until one day they went to get an MRI or a brain scan or something, and the scientists, the doctors were shocked. Said, Where is your brain? How are they functioning? See, you see my point? So the, the physical brain itself is not the, 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 the only thing that's going on. There's more, there's more to intelligence, awareness, learning, memory than just uh, the physical. So just uh, keep that in mind, uh, literally, when, as you go through this, this program. And, and by the way, I apologize if it seems like I'm jumping around. Um, this, this is, uh, a non-scripted but outlined presentation, and I prefer to, to, to converse with you like this as we might if we were sharing a conversation as friends. I, I don't want to read you a script, and you don't want to hear that. Um, so I'm going to throw in some humor. I'm going to throw in some, some um, personal observations, some viewpoints, some opinions at the same time that I'm giving you all this information. So uh, in, in summary, again, just before we really get started, Remember that we're talking about how to prevent the brain from toxicity, to pre prevent brain damage, in other words. And then secondly, we're talking about how to augment the brain with the correct minerals, the correct elements from the table of elements that can augment and enhance your cognitive function and augment and enhance your cognitive function and augment and enhance your cognitive function. <laughs> And by the way, uh, if you don't have the table of elements memorized, it might be a good idea to bring it up right now on a computer or your mobile device. Go to webelements.com, and it'll bring up the table for you right there, webelements.com. In fact, I am going to bring that up while I am um, while I'm talking to you here. Uh, here we go. So uh, on, on the table of elements, we are going to be talking about just a few of these elements, the ones that really, really matter. We're not going to deal with most of the transition metals, which are the, in the center, uh, but we are going to deal with the, the two rightmost columns of those, starting with copper, and uh, the copper column, and the zinc column. And we're also going to be dealing with uh, the oxygen column, the fluorine column, and a few other specific elements here and there. So we are going to be talking about this, but I'm not going to make it super technical, so don't, don't, uh, don't worry. This isn't going to be a chemistry class. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the, the concept of toxicity. And this is really crucial to understand, and I'm going to go quickly on this. What is your brain powered by? Have you ever really thought about that? What powers your brain? Well, most people don't think that their brain is powered by anything because they haven't engaged that brain to think about it. The truth is, the brain doesn't run by magic. It actually runs off of what's in your blood. What's in your blood? Things like oxygen and uh, blood glucose and minerals to help catalyze biological and physiological reactions. Your brain runs on the things that are in your blood, which, by the way, explains why you have the carotid arteries that are pumping blood to your brain. <laughs> if you think about it, if your brain didn't need anything as fuel, you wouldn't need arteries up to your head, right? Going through your neck. But uh, you can actually touch, you can feel the pulse of your heart pumping blood through the carotid arteries right into your brain. So you're actually delivering fuel, you're delivering nutrients to your brain. Your circulatory system is also taking away waste products, the cellular waste products that are produced by every living cell in your body, including neurological cells. So 
Your brain is consuming fuel and your brain is producing cellular waste. Blood brings the fuel in, blood takes the waste away. The waste is then, of course, processed through other organs such as the kidneys or the liver or uh, if it's carbon dioxide waste, even exhaled through respiration and so on and so forth. Uh, this, of course, is true through, uh, for every living cell in your body. So your skin cells, uh, the ones that are still alive anyway, uh, also receive uh, blood and nourishment and uh, then excrete cellular waste products which are carried away by your blood. Now, why is this important to understand? Because um, your blood determines the quality of the cognitive function that you get in the same way that the gasoline that you put into an, uh, an automobile determines the quality of the, the engine running that you get, the quality of the performance in that vehicle. For example, you pull up to a gas pump in your $200,000 DeLorean 12-cylinder Super Cruiser racing car or whatever you have, uh, you are going to put a high-performance um, gasoline in that, a very high-octane gasoline because that's what that engine requires to run smoothly. You are not going to put probably diesel engine. Uh, diesel fuel, excuse me, in, in that in that engine. If you put diesel in there, uh, you would, of course, not be able to operate the vehicle. The engine would stop, and you'd probably cause tremendous damage to the engine. Uh, every engine is designed to run on a certain type of fuel. And if you get the wrong type of fuel, that engine doesn't work very well. Now, I know that's a crude metaphor. The brain is actually a lot more complex than... Uh, a combustion engine, which is a pretty ancient technology, but the brain needs the right kinds of fuels, and those fuels have to be provided by your blood. Now, here's the real, here's the real aha moment in all of this. Ask yourself this question: What is your blood made of? Where, where does your blood come from? Uh, believe it or not, a lot of people don't even know. So, where, where does your blood come from? Uh, they say, "Well, I don't know. It's, isn't it just circulating around and around and around?" Uh, <laughs> no, your, your blood cells are dying every day by the millions and you're making new blood every day. Where do you make it? You make it in your bones, your bones, such as your pelvis, for example, actually contain, um, the ability, the, the engineering, if you will, to create new blood cells and they do it constantly. And then they dump those blood cells into your bloodstream where they then circulate with all the other blood. So you're making new blood all the time and you're eliminating blood all the time, mostly through urine. And one of the things that can make your urine yellow, by the way, is a lot of dead red blood cells. It can actually change the color of your urine, which you'll see if you exercise strenuously for a long time and you'll, you'll see that coming out of your urine. So if your bones are making new red blood cells, what are they making them from? Are they making them by magic? Do, do your bones have little magic wands and they just kind of teleport blood cells into existence? No, no, not at all. Your blood cells are made by your bones using the nutrients that are circulating in your blood. How do nutrients get into your blood? They get in there through digestion. For the most part, digestion, but also to some extent, absorption through your skin. So in other words, what you are eating and drinking becomes what's circulating in your blood. Now, I know that's a very basic concept. Everybody should know this, but a lot of people don't. When you eat and drink things, they are digested. They go through your digestive tract. And then through your intestinal walls, nutrients get absorbed into your bloodstream. And they get circulated in your blood. Those nutrients get picked up by your bones. Your bones use those nutrients, which include things like proteins and fatty acids and minerals and water, to make new red blood cells. The new red blood cells are then circulated everywhere in your body, including your brain. The red blood cells carry oxygen, but blood plasma also carries many other things, such as minerals. So what you eat becomes your blood. What's in your blood is what's used by your bones to make new blood. Your new blood is what's circulated to your brain. This is crucial to understand because it means that your brain cannot function any better than what you eat. Are you connecting the dots on this one? Your brain cannot function any better than what you eat and drink and inhale and absorb and so on and so forth. The things that make up your blood become your brain. So you take the average American. What's the average American eating? Junk food. 
junk nutrients, processed food, factory manufactured food, cancer causing food additives and ingredients. Well, what kind of cognitive function are they going to get? Junk function, processed food, brain function, artificial additives in their brains. They're going to get really poor cognitive performance, like trying to run your super fast race car on, on diesel fuel with sludge in it. So most people cannot function cognitively at the level that they were designed to because their blood is full of junk because of what they eat, what they drink, what they absorb, what they inhale. Yes. Things you put on your skin can go into your blood chemicals. So most people are walking around in a state of, I have to say this mental retardation. And this is not a slur. This is not an insult. This is a technical term. They are cognitively retarded or impaired uh, same, same meaning synonymous terms. They're cognitively impaired or retarded because of, of what they have been consuming. Now, because this is so common in American society, it is considered to be normal to be cognitively impaired, to have very little ability to think for yourself, to have, uh, to, to struggle, to learn anything new. These are all considered common things. They're considered normal to the extent that someone who actually has the full use of their brain is considered a genius, even though they're not, they're just, they're just healthy. So mental retardation is so common that all the, all the public school curricula have been watered down so that kids won't fail. Even if they get the answers wrong in the new math classes or what's it called? Common core curriculum. You don't even need to get the right answers anymore because they can't. All cognitively impaired. They're eating genetically modified, partially hydrogenated soybean oils <laughs> and meats raised on artificial hormones and spiced up with monosodium glutamate, also known as excitotoxins that damage neurological function. So they can't think very well. So that is so common, but people don't understand it because they make no connection between what they eat and the brain function they get. And what most people do, which is so insanely crazy and so short-sighted, is that when they have a problem with their moods or they start feeling down or depressed, instead of thinking, hey, maybe this has something to do with the junk food diet I'm eating. No, they go to their doctor and they say, give me a pill to artificially hijack my brain chemistry to trick me into thinking I'm feeling better. Those are called antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs or bipolar drugs, whatever. These drugs are so dangerous, by the way, one of the things I learned in my pilot training is that you cannot fly an airplane if you're on these drugs. The FAA will prohibit you from having a pilot license or really what's called a private pilot certificate or a commercial pilot certificate if you are on these drugs because they're so damaging to the brain and they cause so many suicides. I asked my flight instructor, I said, how come the FDA, the FAA doesn't allow pilots to uh, take antidepressant drugs? His answer was because the FAA got tired of pilots flying their planes into buildings. <laughs> That's, that was his answer. I guess they were suicide missions by uh, these pilots who, who were doped up on these drugs. But uh, regardless of what you believe about antidepressants, they are hijacking your brain chemistry, not supporting the healthy nutrition that you really need to support good cognitive brain function. So you must, if you're going to understand this course, you must grasp this link between what you eat and the brain function that you get. If you eat junk foods, you're going to have junk cognitive function. If you eat processed artificial foods, you're going to have processed artificial thinking. You're going to have mood problems. You're going to have emotional swings. You're going to have loss of memory. You're going to have basically little by little, you're going to turn into a zombie drone, also known in the United States of America as a quote voter. Now, on the other hand, if you pursue a very high functioning diet like I do, and like I'm going to share with you here, if you get the toxins out of your diet and if you get the right nutrients and minerals into your diet, 
that are known to support cognitive function, then you are going to clear away the cobwebs. You're going to have better moods, a brighter outlook, more optimism. You're going to be happier. You're going to be able to learn better, remember better, and enjoy your life more. Because who wouldn't enjoy being more of a genius, having the ability to remember things better? Like, where did I park my car again? <laughs> or where did I even put my car keys, come to think of it? Wouldn't it be nice to have your full cognitive faculties back at work? Now, the other interesting thing about all this information that I'm going to share with you is that if you do this, you'll also notice a change in your personality. You will actually, there's, there's one nutrient I'm going to talk about here that I call the organization nutrient. When you take this nutrient, at least this has been my experience, it makes you want to clean the house. <laughs> it's funny to say that, but it makes you cognitively, cognitively makes you more organized. You want to be more organized. Your, your brain just suddenly makes more sense of everything. And you, you have this urge to clean up your desk, to clean up your house, to have things in their proper place. And uh, that, that, that's a big benefit for most people. Unless you're already a clean freak, in which case <laughs> this may not help you. But for those of us who, who tend to be, have too many projects and too many things all over the place, uh, this nutrient can help you get organized. I call it the organization nutrient. All right, so with all that said, I'm going to get into this now. We'll start with the table of elements. I'm going to get into this now. We'll start with the table of elements. I'm going to get into this now. <laughs> All right, beginning on the left column, the first column of the table of elements with hydrogen, of course, at the top left, I want you to look at the element directly beneath that, lithium. Lithium. Now, lithium, you might know from lithium ion batteries. Yeah, it's the same lithium. You may have also heard of a drug given to mental patients called lithium. And you might say, well, that's weird. Why are the battery, why is the battery lithium uh, have the same name as the drug lithium? Well, the answer is because they are the same thing. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's the same element. It is lithium. Lithium is a very powerful antidepressant. It is a brain function modulator in trace amounts. Lithium for hundreds of years has been given to patients suffering from psychosis and mental problems and it has proven to be very, very therapeutic. And that's why it, it was embraced as a drug to be used on patients suffering from certain conditions. What's really interesting about this is that throughout the history of North America, you had a lot of hot springs in places like Arkansas and Texas that were well known to be healing hot springs. Where people would come and they would soak in the hot springs and they would literally heal. Their, they would heal their psychosis. They would heal their, their madness. They would heal some of their physical ailments. They would heal from diseases. And this gained quite a reputation throughout the 1800s and the, uh, the early 1900s until Western medicine came along and said, let's just drug everybody instead. But the truth is that these, these uh, hot springs were mineral hot springs that contained elements like lithium and magnesium and sulfur that we're going to talk about here more too. And these elements have amazing healing properties. And if you soaked in the healing pools, you could absorb them through your skin. And remember what I said about the blood supply. If it goes through your skin, it gets into your blood. Then your blood is circulating the lithium, the sulfur, the magnesium, whatever else you absorbed. And then that is going to your brain. And it's being used to make new red blood cells and new blood plasma. So it's going to your brain. Now your brain is being bathed in this trace amount of lithium, which is actually good for modulating and balancing brain function. So in essence, by dipping into the hot springs pools in Wyoming or wherever, in Montana, wherever you happen to be, Arkansas is best known for them, you could actually be giving yourself therapy, mineral therapy, actual medicine through those pools. So that history, that, that it was not fiction. It wasn't snake oil. It wasn't a hoax. 
those were therapeutic pools. They still are. In fact, they still have sulfur. They still have, you know, why do people's joints feel better? People who are arthritic, why do they go soak in the, in the hot tubs, the mineral hot springs, and they feel so much better? It's not just the heat. It's not just the water. It's the sulfur in the water getting into their blood, being circulated around their body, and reducing the symptoms of arthritic inflammation in the joints because sulfur is very, very good at doing that thing in particular. So lithium has a fascinating history and the hot springs are very therapeutic. In fact, if you can find hot springs today, you would do yourself a favor by going and soaking in them. And if you can't find hot springs, go swim in the ocean. The ocean has a nice mineral makeup that can also be very, very therapeutic. And in fact, that brings me to the next element in the next column over the second column, magnesium. Magnesium is... Wow, really a, a miraculous nutrient. It's best known for its ability to enhance the relaxation of the body, but it's also very much needed in uh, neuron function as well as in uh, cardio function, uh, the relaxing of the heart muscle uh, at the trailing edge of the pumping action is is uh, aided in part by magnesium. In fact, magnesium is necessary for your muscles to relax. And magnesium is a vasodilator, um, which means it helps, it helps reduce blood pressure, helps expand uh, uh, blood vessels or relax the walls of, of your blood vessels. Uh, magnesium has a fascinating history. It is one of the few minerals that is still sold over the counter as something that you can put in your bathtub and you can soak in. And uh, in fact, magnesium sulfate is the most common chemical form of what is more readily known as Epsom salts. If you take a hot bath and you pour some Epsom salt crystals into that bath and you swirl the water around and let that Epsom salt dissolve, you get a magnesium bath. The magnesium goes through your skin, goes into your blood and helps you feel relaxed. But it's more than a feeling. It actually is relaxing your body. It actually is in your bloodstream. It's relaxing your brain. It's reducing stress. It is nourishing your heart and your cardiovascular system and all the other organs in your body, many of which are probably magnesium deficient because most people are magnesium deficient. They're not getting enough. But you can get it swimming in the ocean. The ocean is very, very rich in magnesium, by the way. It's, in fact... I remember testing, what was it called? Um, it was an elemental, uh, an ocean derived elemental fertilizer for organic gardening. And it's basically ocean salt. And it, it um, the, I'm not going to give the name of this, but it talked about having 90 minerals uh, because that's what's found in the ocean. So I did an elemental analysis of this product in the atomic spectroscopy laboratory. And guess what I found most of the formula is? Magnesium. And yes, it has all these other elements in it in very, very trace amounts, L sometimes less than one part per billion, by the way. But magnesium was very, very high level, very high concentration of magnesium in ocean water concentrates. Um, so if you go swim in the ocean, you're going to get a lot of magnesium in your body. And some people say swimming in the ocean is very, very healthy. That might be one of the key reasons. Nevertheless, if you want to enhance brain function, you need to make sure that you can rest your brain and have a stress-free, rejuvenating sleep at night. If you can't sleep, you can't think the next day. The brain is wired to function only when it has a lot of rest in between peak performance hours. So magnesium can help you sleep. It can help your brain relax when it needs to relax and do the dreaming, which is part of learning, by the way, and get the REM sleep that you need so that you can wake up fresh the next day, ready to use that amazing organ that you have, that miraculous neural network with high plasticity that we call the human brain. Magnesium can help you do that. Let's move on. Let's see what's next on the list. Let's go to copper. Oh, yeah, copper. Atomic, um, uh, atomic symbol of CU, copper. Now, with copper, we start to get into some of the negative effects of having too many of the wrong minerals. Copper is very interesting. 
at very, very trace levels, it is a, a crucial nutrient for your nervous system. You need a little bit of copper, just a little bit. Not too much, though. If you start to get too much copper, you start to have mental problems. And what I've seen in people that are copper poisoned is I've seen mental insanity. I've seen outbursts of anger. I've seen emotional instability, depression, bipolar type of behavior, and even psychosis. And people hearing voices in their heads. That, and I'm not talking about wearing a headset and listening to hypnosis tapes. No, uh, like people who actually think demons and spirits are talking to them as they're walking down the street. Now, copper is fascinating. It's just a fascinating mineral for, for lots of different reasons. But most people, it turns out, are getting too much copper these days. And this is something that almost nobody knows. Nobody talks about this. And here's why. If you're taking a multivitamin, and I have a bottle of multivitamins right here. Hear that? If you're taking a multivitamin, um, the goal of these multivitamin companies is always to have a multivitamin that has uh, 100% of the daily value for all the nutrients. Like if you go out and you buy Centrum vitamins, let's say, uh, Centrum wants to say for everything, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B6, and so on and so forth. They want to have 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. And with copper, they, they do the same thing because copper is on the list. So they want to have 100% of, of copper. 100% of the daily requirement. Well, it turns out that uh, because of that, many multivitamins and multi-mineral supplements are loaded with way too much copper because they all want to hit the 100%. They have copper concentrations that, in my opinion, are toxic if taken over a long period of time. So people who are taking multivitamins can very easily get way too much copper especially when combined with the truth that many of the pipes going into the homes of these people are still made out of copper, right? And when water flows through copper, water picks up copper. When water flows through brass, water picks up the elements of brass, which, by the way, often include lead. So as uh, you have water flowing into your house, it's flowing through the, the city water supply, which dumps a bunch of poison in it, by the way. Uh, we'll talk about uh, fluorine and chlorine later on. And then it goes through all these pipes and it picks up all, all these <laughs> corroded bits of iron, maybe, and um, maybe some lead in the pipes. And then it goes through the copper pipes and the brass fittings, which are contaminated with lead. And it comes out of your tap. By the time you get it, well, it's pretty contaminated stuff. I wouldn't drink it. Uh, and it has extra, extra copper in it by that time. And then on top of that, you slam some multivitamins. Boom. Pretty soon you're taking way too much copper. And then you start to hear voices in your head. And then you go to the doctor. You, you seek psychiatric treatment or something like that. When the problem is just too much copper. Or it could be, depending on the person. So um, I suggest that, first of all, you should... I'm not against multivitamins, but if you're going to get them, get them that are food-based. Uh, the food-based sources such as MegaFood, MegaFood is, the, is the, the company I recommend. The food-based sources are the best because that is that gives you organic minerals that are already made bioavailable by the food, by the plant, or the yeast. In, in that case, they use uh, yeast forms to, um, they feed the yeast minerals and then the yeast turn them into bioavailable uh, organic nutrients, what is what they're called at that point. Um, if you uh, are taking inorganic forms of these nutrients, then, then they can be far more toxic. So if you get cheap copper, if you buy these off-the-shelf vitamins, multivitamins at, at you know, the big box retail stores or grocery stores, what you're getting is completely toxic. It is just a combination of a bunch of synthetic chemical vitamins like B1, B6, B3, B12, they're all synthetic, totally toxic. In fact, B12 is usually bound with a cyanide molecule. Um, it's called cyanocobalamin is the form of B12 that's found in those vitamins. Totally toxic, completely toxic to your body. Um, and you're also getting the cheap mineral forms, such as um, 
uh, iron oxide, you know, is like rust or calcium carbonate, which is basically just ground up seashells and rocks or magnesium oxide, which is a, an oxidated magnesium metal, like a junk metal that probably belongs on the floor of a welding company or something. Um, <laughs> these are not foods. So all the people out there that are buying multivitamins and multiminerals off the shelf at these regular retail stores, you are, you're actually eating poison. And so that's going to harm brain function, and it might be one of the reasons why your brain isn't working as well as it should. And you're going to get way too much copper in those formulas. So my advice is uh, if you're going to take multivitamins, get food-based forms. But even if you don't do that, just grow your own sprouts. Eat, eat your own food. Grow your own garden vegetables. Um, get as much food as you can locally, even if you're getting it from farmer's markets and CSAs and any, you know, sprouting on your countertop, whatever you can do, get as much food as you can locally. Avoid synthetic vitamins like the plague. You'd be far better off eating fresh organic produce uh, that's grown with some mineral enhancements rather than taking toxic, cheap supplements. Um, if you're going to take mineral supplements, be very careful about how much copper you take. Very careful about how much copper you take. Very careful about how much copper. All right, let's go to the next one. Right beneath copper is silver. Um, the symbol is AG. Silver. Uh, silver doesn't really have much of, uh, of uh, an impact on your cognitive function, but I'm just going to mention it because it is antibacterial. Um, so copper is also antibacterial. In fact, copper and silver should be used in hospitals and burn wards. And if you have a, a wound, let's say you have a burn on your arm uh, and it's a severe burn, not only should you treat it with something like aloe vera and uh, bandages, but you can put a topical silver solution, uh, soak the bandage in it, put that on your skin, and you can prevent infections very, very effectively with that kind of silver solution and change out the bandages, obviously, on a regular basis and seek medical attention. But um, copper and silver are both antibacterial. Um, copper can make you insane at high doses. Silver seems to be more inert, which is why silver seems to be used more in some dental work and some electronics and also some medical devices. So there's no harm in uh, to your brain in taking um, uh, some silver, but there's no reason to either. It's not, it's not, it's not a supplement for your brain. Now, uh, next down on the list is gold, AU. Uh, I just mentioned gold here because it's underneath, it's in the copper column and we have copper, silver, gold, which also interestingly traces the history of uh, industrial development in our world and economic development. Coins used to be copper and then they were silver and then they were gold and now they're worthless paper. But that's another course altogether. In any case, uh, I mentioned gold here for this reason. Uh, some people believe that uh, monatomic gold can give them um, amazing powers of cognition and awareness. Um, I have no idea if that's true, but there are stories of, of ancient Egypt some people claim that inside the pyramids, people went in there and, and they snorted monatomic gold or something. I don't know. But the reason I say this is because I have purchased a lot of the so-called monatomic gold products that are available in the marketplace. And I've tested them for their gold content. And most of them hardly have any gold at all. So really, this is more of a warning to say, um, don't spend money on buying so-called monatomic gold because most of it's just a scam, essentially. Maybe there's somebody out there that's honest that I haven't run into yet, but haven't found him yet. Nevertheless, gold has been historically linked to very high cognition and high vibration type of functionality, including in biblical lore. Uh, if you look at um, the art of, of angels and, and Jesus and the Christian, um, the Christian paradigm, it is, it has, there's a lot of gold in it. And this is true across many, many different religions, in, including uh, ancient Egypt religions as well. In fact, if you look uh, throughout Buddhism, for example, and uh, you know, Catholicism and you know, Judaism, all, all these religions, 
they have gold as a very high vibration, very precious type of metal. So it's not, it's not unreasonable to think, well, there really is something very, very special about gold. Uh, gold is very, very malleable. Gold can be hammered paper thin, actually thinner than paper. Um, it is incredibly resilient to uh, oxidation. It is virtually resistant to oxidation. Uh, so it, it lasts uh, almost forever, which is, again, why it's also used in things like dental work. Gold has a very, very high transmission rate uh, or transmission density, you might say, in electronics, which is why it's used for speaker connectors and electronics connectors things like that. So uh, the idea that, oh, you could breathe in some gold and maybe have higher transmission of your brain neurons, you know, I can, I can sort of see where people uh, get that. And hey, it may be true if you really get honest gold. But I don't know. And I'm not about to snort gold just to find out. So I just mentioned that in there as kind of a warning. <sighs> don't, don't snort gold. All right, let's go on to zinc, the next column over zinc is a very important trace mineral for healing. Now, it's well known in the scientific literature that zinc can accelerate the repair of your skin. It's also crucial for immune function and for giving your physical organs the ability to resist uh, pathogens, especially airborne pathogens such as influenza. This is why zinc is especially important during the winter months when people catch a lot of colds and influenza and maybe other pandemic diseases in, in, in the future. But uh, zinc is really, really crucial for that. Zinc is a healing mineral. Now, I believe, and I think eventually this will be borne out in the sci scientific literature, I believe that zinc is also crucial for repair of brain function. So if you ever have your brain damaged by something, and we'll talk about the things that damage your brain uh, in the next section, Repairing those, those damaged neurons can be, I believe, accelerated with zinc in the same way that it, it accelerates a skin repair. So if you don't have zinc, you won't repair your neurons as quickly. And as you'll find out in the next section, most of us have damaged neurons because we've been exposed to things like mercury in vaccines or monosodium glutamate in canned soups or snack chips, um, other things, electromagnetic pollution, for example and various brain damaging solvents and additives that are in the food. So your brain is absolutely damaged in some way, as, as was mine. So zinc, I believe, can help repair it, which I had more uh, documentation on that right now, but there haven't been a lot of studies on that yet. Now, directly beneath zinc on the table of elements is cadmium. I want to mention cadmium here for a very important reason. Cadmium... A lot of people aren't familiar with it, but it's a heavy metal. And I find high levels of cadmium in things like uh, rice protein. I've seen 2.4 parts per million or 2,400 parts per billion uh, cadmium in rice protein. I've seen, I think, as much as 1.8 parts per million in powdered cacao, you know, cocoa or cacao herbs, chocolate, basically. Uh, I've seen high levels in coffee as well. Cadmium is a toxic heavy metal that will change your personality. It will also damage your heart. Cadmium is very bad for kidneys, heart, and skin. And if you get enough of it, it will harden your arteries. But at the same time, this is what's really interesting. It's hardening your personality. People who have cadmium toxicity actually crave cadmium. And this is why many of them drink a lot of coffee. And these tend to be people who, who like to yell a lot, who get angry a lot. They're kind of bullies. They bully all the people around them. They get into a lot of verbal altercations. They're kind of aggressive. They are um, loud, boisterous, is the way you might describe them. If they if they go out drinking on a Friday night, they're the they're they're the person that's going to get into a fight with someone. Uh, these are cadmium addicts, and when they're short on cadmium, they actually have to get a cadmium fix by often drinking coffee or smoking cigarettes, which are also very high in cadmium. So. You probably know some people who, who both drink a lot of coffee and smoke a lot of cigarettes, and they're loud and boisterous and difficult to get along with. Classic cadmium personality. But they may not have started out that way, and this is the interesting thing about cadmium. If you, if you get too much, it can start to poison your brain, you're changing your personality into this type of person that I'm describing. It can make you be an aggressive, boisterous, difficult person to be around. 
And then when someone takes the cadmium away from you, you can go into cadmium withdrawal. And that, that can make you even more irritable. Some people say, well, it's just a coffee withdrawal. But it's actually more than that. It's also a cadmium withdrawal. Uh, but getting off of cadmium is key to regaining control of your own moods and personality. So avoid cadmium. Uh, keep in mind that that means probably avoiding rice protein because I find very high levels of cadmium in rice protein. Uh, even organic rice protein sold by Whole Foods, for example, full of cadmium. And uh, I've documented it extensively. I've documented it extensively. All right, let's go next to uh, what's beneath cadmium is mercury, um, symbol HG. Um, I think that's from the Latin, what is it, hyd hydrogeria? I think that's what that's from. Um, uh, silver water or liquid silver is, uh, is what that means in Latin. So anyway, H that's why it's HG and not MR or something. But anyway, HG, uh, mercury is extremely toxic to your neurology. It is very important not to eat it it is even more important never to inject it. So this right there, think about it, everybody that's out there getting flu vaccines is being injected with mercury. And a substantial amount too, 25 micrograms is a substantial amount of mercury to go directly into your bloodstream, which gets circulated where? To your brain. Every flu shot is a mini lobotomy. And this is what everybody needs to understand. If you take a flu shot, you're damaging your brain. You're going to kill... A certain number of brain cells. You're going to impair the, the neurons in a, a, to a certain degree because of the mercury in the vaccines. Now, if you want to go out and get vaccines that have no mercury in them, then uh, that's your choice. Uh, maybe you want to have a vaccine against um, diseases that haven't existed in North America for four decades, such as polio. Uh, the CDC wants everybody to be injected with a polio vaccine, even though there is no polio. Um, <laughs> so why do you need a vaccine uh, since it's not even circulating anywhere? Hmm, kind of makes you wonder. Uh, maybe we should all get vaccinated against um, Ebola, too. That, that, that's what the CDC is probably going to be pushing, even though there is no Ebola outbreak in America, at least not at the time of this um, recording. If you want to get vaccinated... Uh, just make sure there's no thimerosal in it. Make sure there's no mercury in it because you, you surely don't want to inject yourself with, with uh, mercury. Uh, if you do get mercury in your bloodstream, it's going to damage your brain. It's going to damage your kidneys. This is crucial because, uh, of course, kidneys help remove toxins from your blood supply. And if your kidneys are damaged, then you're going to have a hard time removing these poisons from your blood, which is going to make your brain function at an even lower level of uh, cognition. So keep that in mind. Now, what about mercury in food? Well, I have solutions for you on this. You're going to love me for this one, too. Um, because I, I pioneered the research on this, I'm, I, I'm the only person in the world who ever tested hundreds of different foods and herbs for their ability to bind with mercury during a simulated digestion cycle. And um, so everybody knows there's mercury in fish, you know, tuna, right? There's mercury in tuna. And if you eat it, you're probably going to absorb it. Unless you do what I found out. Uh, I found that, um, well, I, I, I built a digestion simulator. And uh, using the atomic spectroscopy instrumentation, I spiked samples with mercury to known concentrations of mercury. And then I tested lots of different foods and superfoods to see what would bind with mercury. And thereby prevent it from being absorbed through your intestinal tract and entering your blood supply. So do you understand that if you eat something and you poop it out, you didn't absorb it? Does that make sense? So if you eat it and you, if you do absorb it, it goes into your blood. If you don't absorb it, it goes out your bowels. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because mercury is a sticky element. It's very sticky. It sticks to everything. It's very easy to bind with. It turns out that lots and lots of foods, especially fibers, have very high binding affinity with dietary mercury. So if you eat tuna and you take some fiber at the same time, you can mop up most of the mercury in that fiber so that you don't even absorb it. You could even do so by eating a salad or eating an apple, something with pectin fiber in it, at the same time that you eat the mercury. That offers you pretty good protection, anywhere from about 50 to 75, maybe 80% protection against the mercury. 
But I found three things that work even better, way better. Over 90% protection is offered by strawberries, peanut butter, and chlorella. Got it? That's the list. Strawberries, peanut butter, and chlorella. Sounds like a delicious sandwich, doesn't it? Slap two pieces of bread around that and some tuna fish in there. <laughs> Have yourself a strawberry tuna, peanut butter, chlorella bread sandwich. Um, I'm joking, but strawberries have a very unique fiber that connects the seeds, which are on the outer, the outside of the strawberry to the inside of the strawberry. Strawberries are the only fruit that have seeds on the outside instead of the inside. And the fibers that connect the seeds happen to be great mercury mops. They bind with mercury. So eat strawberries with your tuna fish, and you're probably going to mop up virtually all the mercury. Uh, peanut butter is also very sticky by itself. It happens to stick really, really well to mercury. And then chlorella was the best. Chlorella, I think it was, I think it was 94 or 96 or 98 percent. It, it was something. It was right up in there uh, of reduction of mercury. So um, if you go out and you eat anything with mercury in it, which you should automatically assume all fish has mercury, including all seafood, scallops, shrimp, sea bass, you name it. You should eat some strawberries with that meal. You should eat maybe some peanut butter or definitely get some fruit pectin. Some, eat some apples and pears if you want. Eat some pineapple. Get some fruit pectin. Get some fiber. Bring some psyllium husk fiber if you want. Just take some fiber. And then that mercury will go out with your bowel movements instead of being absorbed in your blood. And therefore, you don't absorb it. How's that? That tip right there is worth the whole course. Let me tell you. I don't know why, I mean, the FDA should be telling everybody this, but they're just too bureaucratic to, to do it. I mean, how come Americans can't just be told, um, hey, if you eat tuna fish, you know, eat some strawberries and fresh fruit with it to protect yourself. End of story. You know, so simple. But um, I guess nobody wants people to know this information. So you heard it here first, and um, you can actually read about my research on that at naturalnews.com if you want to search for... Um, Mercury and strawberries. You'll see my research on that, and you, you can find more details there. Very, very powerful research. This is the kind of stuff the whole world needs to know, but no one's telling them. All right, moving on to aluminum. Aluminum, or as the um, Brits say, aluminum. I'm not sure how, how, how they got that, but um, actually they, they, they spell it differently. Um, anyway, here in the States, we call it aluminum. And aluminum is a light metal. I think the atomic weight on that is 27 uh, for the most common isotope. And aluminum is um, linked with dementia and Alzheimer's. So there is some evidence that aluminum is interfering with cognition. So you want to get all the aluminum out of your body as much as possible. Um, how do you do that? Well, the main thing is to not absorb it and not drink it. Now, a lot of the deodorants that you're using, as you're smearing these deodorants into your armpits, you are actually dosing yourself with aluminum. Yeah, uh, look at the ingredients on those uh, common deodorants, and you'll find they contain a lot of aluminum. Uh, there's also aluminum that comes your way from just falling out of the sky. There actually is a lot of aluminum falling out of the sky and landing on the soils. There's also a lot of aluminum in the soils. Some plants tend to take up aluminum and you, you end up eating aluminum, but you can also get aluminum in water. And I'm going to give you another extremely valuable tip right here that no one else in the world knows as of this point. I am going to release this later on naturalnews.com, but uh, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, I haven't mentioned this publicly to anyone yet. And here's how to uh, re uh, remove 100% of the aluminum from your water at the same time that you're eliminating 100% of the lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, uranium, strontium, cesium. I, I imagine it would remove tungsten too, but I didn't, I didn't test that. Here's how to do it. I went out and bought all the top water filters, all the big brands, Brita, Pure, Culligan, Mavia, you name it. I bought all these brands. It was like 11, 11 or 12 water filters. These countertop pitchers, you know, that you, you put on your counter and you pour water into them and they have filters and then they claim to filter the water and then you're supposed to drink the water that comes out of the bottom. Right. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. So I tested these 
And the way I tested these is I went to my ICPMS laboratory, and of course I have uh, external standards with all these different metals. And so I mixed up a toxic cocktail, very high concentrations of all these metals, lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and so on. And uh, put these at levels like over 2,000 parts per billion of each of these metals. And then I, I poured this co uh, toxic cocktail into all of the water filter pitchers, one by one. Uh, I rinsed them first, actually, to flush through a few gallons to make sure their filters were fully activated first. But then I, 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 I put in this toxic cocktail. And uh, immediately I noticed that some of these water filters were filtering way too quickly. It's like the water was just pouring out of the bottom as if it didn't have time to be filtered. <laughs> so that immediately raised some question marks in my mind. I was like, uh, huh? How could that be filtering that water when it looks like it's just pouring straight through? Um, other filters were slower, different speeds of these filters. But then I took the resulting water of all these filters and I tested that in the ICPMS instrumentation, which involves a plasma torch, so it's a lot of fun. And I was then shocked to look at the results, and I'm going to share the results with you right here. Um, again, this is worth the entire program, what you're about to hear. Um, out of all these filters... All but two of them almost completely failed. They removed very little lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, um, uranium, all these, all these toxic heavy metals. They did very poorly. One of the filters did okay on, a, on certain, certain minerals, but didn't do well on others. There was only one water filter that was fantastic. It was like it was in a different category. It reduced levels of every single metal, including aluminum, by the way, to such a low concentration that you would call it zero, even though I was measuring things like 15 parts per billion or 1.5. Or if you want to put it in parts per million, uh, that would be 0 0.015 parts per million. So it's very small. And um, some of them are like 0 0.006 or 0 0.011 and so on. And this is true across the board, including the elements that have radioactive isotopes, such as uranium, strontium, and cesium, which I did test. I tested in this. So there's only one water filter in the market today that filters out all of these to near zero levels. There's only one. And I'm talking about the countertop affordable water filters that you can buy on Amazon or Walmart uh, for, you know, 30 bucks or 35 bucks or whatever they are. There's only one brand. Would you like to know what brand that is? Yes, <laughs> I bet you would. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. But, but I'm just going to preface that by saying um, I don't earn anything by telling you this company name. I don't sell this water filter. Uh, the company didn't pay me to say this. They don't even know. They don't even know I'm testing their product. So this is completely independent. Uh, no financial incentive whatsoever. Just giving you good information. Here's the filter. Zero water filter. That's the brand. And if you go to their website, they actually describe their ion exchange filter technology. Now, when I look at websites of companies that make water filters and I see all their claims, I'm a natural skeptic. I think, ah, eh, they're full of it. You know, exaggerating. Eh, it can't be true, right? You know, that, that's what I'm thinking in my New York accent. Or maybe that was uh, a little bit of Jersey in there. But anyway, um, in this case, with zero water filters, it is true. I'm shocked. I'm shocked because I'm, I'm used to seeing companies lie all the time. And every time I take something in, into the lab and I test it, well, not every time, but most of the time, I find that they're lying. But in this case, zero water, they're telling the truth. Imagine that. It's so shocking because I'm used to companies lying. And when they tell the truth, it just blows my mind. So... Uh, immediately upon discovering that, I went out and bought some zero water filters uh, for myself just to have them on hand in case I needed them. But if you want to remove virtually everything everything from your water, um, zero water filter actually works. And that's how you get the aluminum out. And that's how you get the lead out. So with that said, let's move on to lead. So with that said, let's move on to lead. So with that said... Lead makes you stupid. Lead 
consider lead to be the stupid metal. It makes you stupid. It's kind of interesting that they used to put lead in the gasoline, right? Remember that? Back in the 1970s? <laughs> yeah, you had regular gasoline, remember? That had lead in it. And then you had unleaded. And you had to pick your, pick your choice, you know? Anyway, they phased lead out of gasoline. And as a result, national IQs actually went up. After they did that, air quality vastly improved. Lead, is, is, engines love lead. It helps prevent engine knock, which, by the way, is the reason why they still use lead in aircraft or aviation fuel. In fact, the fuel that most single-engine piston aircraft use is called 100 low lead or 100 LL or Avgas, for example. It's got lead in it. Not a lot, but it's still in there. And when they fly around, they're dropping lead all over the country. Um, not a good thing, but at least the automobiles aren't burning lead anymore and just dumping that out all over the highways. They used to though. So there's a lot of lead all over the country. There used to be also a pesticide that was used. It was sprayed everywhere across North America. It's still used in many other countries. It's called lead arsenate. And you can probably figure out it's made of, well, lead and arsenic, each of which is highly toxic by itself. And when you combine them, as farmers discovered, well, it's really good at killing pests. <laughs> it's also really good at making people stupid and causing cancer and contaminating your soils, which is why they banned it eventually. But you know how agriculture is? They always come out with a new poison, and then the, the, the corporation that manufactures that poison pays off a bunch of people in Washington, and they say, ah, oh, this, is, this is safe. This is totally safe. It's like glyphosate today or GMOs. They pay off everybody. Ah, it's completely safe. And then a couple of generations later, everybody's dying of cancer. You know, their eyeballs are falling out. Can't have babies. You know, everybody's dying. Or if, if they can't have babies, they're being born as mutants. And then they, then they say, oh, well, guess what? It was the glyphosate or it was the GMOs or it was the thalidomide, whatever it was. And then they, and then they, they create a settlement fund to pay off some of the victims. And then, then they move on to the next chemical and they come out with a new one. Well, this one's safe now. We swear. <laughs> so that's, that's the sad, pathetic history of agricultural chemicals. But lead arsenate was one of those that they used to spray all over all the crops and all the soils. It's still in the soil because you can't wash away lead. It doesn't just disappear. It's still there. So there's lead everywhere, which means there's a lot of lead in some of the foods, especially foods that are grown in China which has a very serious lead problem because of its very intense industrialization combined with a complete lack of environmental controls. They don't care if they, if they just have industrial smokestacks spewing lead and mercury into the air and falling on the farms, and then those farms are growing foods and mushrooms and vegetables and organic rice. Yeah, it's still organic. Because there's no limit. There's no lead limit in organic program. You can have all the lead you want. You can put lead on the field, uh, like lead fertilizer, and it can still be organic. It's true. Look it up. Uh, so in China, everything's contaminated with lead. That's why when we test the dog treats and the cat treats, uh, everything that's made in China is heavily contaminated with lead, cadmium, and mercury. But the dog treats that are from the United States or the, the rice that's grown in California is clean. You know? So my advice on lead is, uh, number one, don't buy any food made in China. Uh, there is one exception to that being goji berries, which are grown at high elevation and don't have the same pollution. But uh, most things and nearly everything grown in China is, is contaminated with lead. So if you want your brain to function well, you got to get the lead out. Um, you have to stop exposing yourself to lead. And I'm going to tell you about another source of lead contamination that's going to absolutely blow your mind. You will be shocked by this one. Calcium supplements. Yeah, I know I'm going to get flack about this from the natural products companies, but I got to tell you, I've tested a lot of calcium supplements, including from some very, very respected companies that are selling things like... Uh, High-end, super, super expensive calcium. Guess what? I found lead in there over five parts per million. Turns out, turns out that lead has a natural affinity for calcium. 
And if you don't get your calcium from a clean source, it's going to be contaminated with lead. And this is why, this is one of the reasons why I have now decided that most over-the-counter calcium supplements are toxic. It's not just the fact that most of them are made from calcium carbonate, which is a toxic form that causes calcification of your body, calcification of your arteries, which is obviously bad for your health. But it's also because these supplements tend to be heavily contaminated with lead, very high concentrations of lead. And I've tested many, many types of calcium, by the way, many calcium supplements, and I found this across the board. So um, I think that if you want to get calcium into your diet, you got to get it from plant-based sources. turns out there's a lot of calcium in plants. And in fact, if you grow your own plants, uh, one of the fertilizers you might use is something such as a calcium nitrate, which has, guess what, calcium in it. So <laughs> if you... If you grow your own plants in your garden, you can just add calcium to the garden. If you do hydroponics or aquaponics, you can use clean calcium in, in your fertilizers. The calcium will be uptaken by the plants, and the plants will contain the calcium that you need. You can get plenty of calcium from greens, for example, from doing greens juicing or eating lots of greens or eating fruits and nuts and seeds especially. Do you know sesame seeds are absolutely loaded with calcium? So I, I got to say, you want to avoid lead and protect your brain, stop taking calcium supplements. If you want to protect your heart, you either need to get extremely high-quality, high-end calcium supplements or get your calcium from plants. I'm not saying that every calcium supplement in the world is bad, but most of them that I have seen are contaminated. There might be some company out there that I've never heard of that is really, really good. I don't know. But I think your body wants bioavailable minerals in plant forms, not rock forms. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, I should mention that on the, uh, on the water filters test, I also tested the uh, survival gravity filters, which includes um, the Big Berkey, ProPure, Dalton, and one other brand. And out of that list... In, in the units that I tested in my lab, the Big Berkey by far removed the most heavy metals. By far. <laughs> it was, it, it, uh, you'll actually have to check, check the website naturalnews.com for the actual results because we are going to publish them. But so the best countertop filter was zero water and the best um, survival gravity filter was the Big Berkey. Uh, in terms of heavy metals, I didn't test for pesticides because uh, uh, I'm not set up with an HPLC in the lab. So we're, we're just testing for heavy metals. Now, let's continue with the table of elements. Let's go over to the oxygen column. Oxygen. This is a very, very interesting column for a number of reasons. But let's we'll start with the top. Oxygen is uh, needed for cellular energy. Oxygen is the, the fuel that your biology burns. Uh, atomic weight of 16. It is something... It, it's. You know, your, red, your red blood cells obviously carry the oxygen so that your cells uh, can, can use them as part of their energy cycle. So think of oxygen as a kind of fuel for your cells. Now, just beneath oxygen is uh, sulfur. Sulfur is a, a literal fuel as you know, oxygen burns. Sulfur is a component of gunpowder. It's, it's something that can physically burn. Uh, it's, it's part of the recipe of, of making you know, combustible uh, chemicals. And in the body, sulfur is also, in Chinese medicine, for example, it's known as um, a, a warming element to add fire to your body. And in terms of nutrition, sulfur is a crucial element for, for example, the manufacture of complex molecules that help eliminate toxic heavy metals from your body. Sulfur is also needed to help improve and enhance joint function and reduce inflammation in joints. So various forms of sulfur, such as MSM, is one uh, very well-known form, has helped a lot of people uh, reduce joint pain and Im improve mobility, reduce inflammation, things like that. In the, uh, in the body, in order to remove toxic heavy metals, you need to have a, a very... 
uh, strong production of uh, glutathione. And to, to do that, you need you, sulfur really helps this, this process. I remember reading a book from one doctor who recommended that you get a source of sulfur every single day. And the sources that, and I agree with that advice, by the way, I think you should have a source of sulfur every single day. So let me just name some of the sources. Number one, you can get sulfur from egg yolks. So if you uh, raise uh, chicken eggs, like, like I do on my farm, uh, I can get fresh eggs every single day. They have no additives, no chemicals. The chickens are all free range. They have really diverse diets. They have very, very orange egg yolks, and those are loaded with sulfur. Um, garlic is another great source of sulfur. Garlic, I think, has 12 or 13 different sulfur compounds in it. So if you can raise your own garlic or buy garlic, use garlic in your cooking, it, has, uh, it delivers the sulfur in very high concentrations, which is really, really crucial for your body, you know, to, again, to remove uh, toxins. You can also get sulfur in certain types of cruciferous vegetables, for example, uh, a cabbage and broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Uh, things like that tend to have a higher sulfur content uh, in them. So uh, these sources uh, are all very good sources. And finally, of course, you can take sulfur supplements such as MSM being one good source, which is really a chemical form. But um, in this case, I think it's okay. Uh, it's not a chemical. It's not, a, it's not an inorganic mineral. It's, it's bound to um, a molecule that your body recognizes. So uh, keep sulfur in mind as something that is, is a source of sort of metaphorical fire for providing energy to your body and, and providing a kind of, kind of uh, burning for the internal combustion engine, you might say, to, to make a crude comparison. Just as oxygen, which is very similar to sulfur uh, in terms of its, uh, its chemical, the, you know, the outside electron shell from the table of elements is very similar. Uh, oxygen is a fuel for cellular metabolism is a fuel for cellular metabolism is a f now i mentioned all of that to mention this selenium selenium is directly beneath sulfur which is directly beneath oxygen in the table of elements and i think this is no coincidence selenium i would like to propose that you think about selenium as the fuel for the brain. Even though that's not exactly what it is, not, it's, not, it's not a great comparison, but let me explain why. Selenium is this, I think selenium is a, a, is a magical nutrient for cognitive function. And by magical, I mean miraculous. I mean, it's just so amazing in, in what it does. Now, we already know that selenium has a very strong anti-cancer component to its functionality. Uh, if you look up selenium and cancer uh, on, let's say, science.naturalnews.com, you'll find lots and lots of published studies looking at the ability of selenium to prevent cancer. But what about, uh, what about cancer, or I'm sorry, what about selenium and cognitive function? Well, here's what I found. Selenium is the organization nutrient. It makes your brain function in a more structured way. It allows you to have a bigger picture view of what you're doing. And I don't know how this works, but it allows you to be more, to have a, a, a bigger concept, to keep more concepts in your head at the same time. It allows you to zoom out, I like to say, and, and be able to hold more in, in your, your, your cognitive space. And this is crucial for learning. This is crucial for memorization. This is crucial for organization, uh, for uh, invention and innovation, all kinds of things. I think selenium is the miracle nutrient for brain function in the same way that vitamin D is the miracle nutrient for cancer prevention. I believe that selenium will one day be recognized as the single most important nutrient for learning and memory. Uh, in the human body. And because of its position on the table of elements, it's kind of easy to understand why. If, if oxygen is uh, 
cellular fuel and and sulfur is a, a fuel for for healthy joints and and uh, building molecules in your body that remove heavy metals then selenium is like fuel for your brain and they're all in the same column they're all very similar on the table of elements they all share some outer shell electron patterns giving them some similar characteristics in chemical reactions uh, which is why selenium is very very uh, it's very reactive in terms it's in, in other words it it is very easy for it to bind to other molecules in chemical reactions uh, in fact this column of oxygen sulfur and selenium just being two columns away from the right hand column uh, means that the outer shell is lacking uh, two electrons and uh, that means it 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 binds very very easily with other compounds or other um, atoms or or diatoms that have a for example a plus two charge so it makes these very very reactive that's why oxygen is a very reactive gas it, it can be very dangerous in fact uh, if you don't know what you're doing around it now so keep this column in mind it's the oxygen sulfur selenium column this is key to cognitive function uh, what kind of selenium should you get again plant-based selenium not selenium from rocks but selenium that has been taken up by plants and transformed into organic bioavailable forms by those plants now I know I've said a lot of really important things in this so far such as the the zero water filters but this is crucial remember selenium selenium is a key for good cognitive function now let's go to the one more column to the right which is the most reactive column of elements in the table of elements this is the uh, these this is the column that is lacking one electron and and so it can it, it's super highly reactive it can react with lots of other elements and lots of other molecules by uh, sharing or or exchanging well really sharing uh, just one electron which is very common and this column consists of fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and others beneath it but uh, these are the main ones fluorine chlorine bromine and, and iodine the first three on this list fluorine chlorine and bromine are all poisons fluorine is an especially dangerous poison for the human body because it is so psycho reactive so if you want to protect your brain function it's very important to avoid taking in fluorine or fluoride the fluoride is simply two fluorine atoms that have bound together now uh, fluoride interferes with chlorine which interferes with bromine which interferes with iodine these interfere with each other so if you have fluorine in your body or, or let's say in your diet uh, you are going to block the receptor sites that would normally be receiving iodine which is a very very important trace mineral for cancer prevention as well as for enhanced cognitive function and of course thyroid function goes without saying uh, you got to have plenty of iodine for a healthy thyroid but you also have to have plenty of iodine for healthy breast tissue healthy prostate tissue many other tissues and organs in your body have some need for iodine as well fluorine being incredibly psychoreactive is used in most psychiatric drugs in fact Prozac according to its atomic weight is about 14 percent fluorine from a you know an atomic perspective the reason that the drug companies use fluorine atoms in their molecular uh, patented formulas is because fluorine is so psychoactive psycho um, it, it, it is highly reactive with your neurology in a way that is I believe very dangerous this is why antidepressant drugs are so strongly linked with suicides and school shootings did you know that most of the school shootings were were uh, carried out by students who were on uh, fluorine based psychiatric drugs or had just recently come off of those drugs and were suffering the side effects from withdrawal from the fluorine so you have to avoid fluorine and fluoride if you want to protect your brain that means you need to avoid fluoride in the water supply 
which is very, very difficult to do because cities, of course, are dripping this toxic element into the water supply by ridiculously claiming that it makes your teeth strong. <laughs> it's, I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. Since when did you swallow a nutrient that at best might only be a topical treatment? It's like, it's like telling people to drink sunscreen to protect themselves from ultraviolet radiation. No, it doesn't work that way. But I did some interesting research on fluoride and purchased fluorosilicic acid or sodium fluoride uh, from numerous suppliers of this chemical in China. And they provide this chemical. They, they export it to United States cities to be dumped into the water supplies. And I tested these chemicals for, guess what? Toxic heavy metals. What did I find? Significant quantities of lead, <laughs> cadmium, mercury, you know, the usual gamut, arsenic, uh, their uh, aluminum, they're, the, the fluoride that's dumped in the water supply is contaminated with toxic heavy metals. And so when you're drinking, um, when you're drinking tap water, you're not only getting the toxic effects of the fluoride, you're also getting the toxic heavy metals that are, that are part of the fluoride that's dumped into the water. And that's in addition to the toxic heavy metals, such as the lead and copper that's already in the water from the pipes or from just the source of the water. So, wow, one more reason to really filter your water, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so you want to avoid fluorine and chlorine as much as possible. Uh, bromine is a safer alternative to chlorine and sometimes is used to help uh, sanitize pools um, in, in place of chlorine, and it, it is a better choice. You want to make sure that you get sufficient quantities of iodine in your diet to support healthy cognitive function. Iodine is really crucial for this. I don't know why exactly it works this way, but iodine tends to give you brain energy. It, it actually makes your brain feel more empowered, more supercharged, but not a stimulant like caffeine, more like you've got uh, strength of, of uh, depth of thought. It's kind of hard to describe unless you experience it yourself. If you're iodine deficient and then you take some iodine, you might experience this yourself as kind of a uh, a strengthening of, of your of your resolve of your of your thinking of your concepts uh, iodine is really great for that and when you combine iodine with the other things that we've talked about here because we, we we've now covered the table of elements by the way you combine iodine with these other things you have a very very powerful recipe for enhanced cognitive function so let me just go over it one more time as a summary. So let me just go over it one more time as a summary. You want, I'm going to go from left to right on the table of elements, okay? You've got lithium, which is a good modulator of healthy brain function. And you can get it from um, trace minerals or you can get it from mineral uh, hot springs. You've got magnesium, which gives you your calm, including mental calm, that allows you to have restful sleep. You can get magnesium from supplements. There are good supplements, such as magnesium malate, for example, is a good, a good form. Or you can get it from ocean water, or you can get it from just eating plants, which happen to have a lot of magnesium in them. Um, moving more to the right, you've got copper, which can make you insane if you get too much of it. You've got gold, beware of the scams of so-called monatomic gold. You've got zinc, crucial for healing, including healing neurological damage. Cadmium, which changes your personality, makes you more belligerent, boisterous, and angry, and also hardens your arteries and damages your kidneys. There's mercury, which damages your brain function and is present in flu vaccines. You can protect yourself from mercury by eating strawberries, peanut butter, or chlorella, at the same time that you eat something contaminated with mercury, such as tuna fish. There's aluminum, which is linked to Alzheimer's and dementia. You can remove aluminum from water using the zero water filter. There's lead, which makes you stupid. Lead is in a lot of things, especially things grown in China. It's also found in calcium supplements very, very frequently. So you should probably avoid calcium supplements and get your calcium from food instead. Oxygen, high energy, source of fuel. Sulfur, very crucial. 
You need to get sulfur in your diet every day through garlic, eggs, or cruciferous vegetables or supplements. And sulfur helps your body create the molecules that remove toxic heavy metals from your organs and tissues. There's selenium, probably the most important mineral in this entire list, which is the, the organization nutrient for your brain. It's the brain energy miracle nutrient, probably uh, could help children learn more effectively if they, if they were given more selenium supplements. Then you've got the poisons of the fluorine column, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, all toxic, fluorine being psychoactive, which is why it's used in psychiatric drugs that are linked to violence and school shootings. You've got iodine, which your body needs in much higher levels than most people are getting, gives you a burst of cognitive energy, but if you're exposed to fluorine or chlorine, that interferes with your absorption of iodine. So that is the review of the table of elements. Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? It's actually just uh, physics and biology, yet the system of modern medicine doesn't really educate people about, well, any of this. They would rather you take uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals, and they don't really teach the basics of nutrition, nor do they talk about toxins that harm cognitive function. Somehow it's not politically correct in medical circles to really discuss the truth about how lead uh, poisons the brain or there's too much copper in vitamin pills or, or um, fluorine is psychoactive and, and interferes with iodine absorption and all these other things. So you're not going to hear this from traditional sources, even though it's all um, really just basic physics and basic chemistry combined with uh, human neurology. With, uh In this section, the final section of this course, Natural Genius, I'm going to talk about some things that poison your brain. And obviously this is really important to, to make sure you fully understand because it's more than just the, the, the chemical poisons and the, the food contaminants, uh, which we will, we will talk about briefly. But it's also understanding the, sor the sources of, of poisoning of your brain and your mind. In other words, your, your, your consciousness. Uh, let me talk about those. First of all, mainstream media is a source of a kind of mental poisoning. Uh, mainstream media is beholden to corporate interests and uh, government interests, and that is all that they cover. If it's not in favor of corporations and governments or their ratings, uh, they don't cover it. So virtually everything that you get from mainstream media sources, and most of the mainstream media outlets are owned in full or in part by uh, powerful corporations such as weapons manufacturers, which is why they're always pro-war, by the way. But almost everything that you get from them is distorted. It's propaganda. It is bias. It is a distortion. And this is why most people now really don't trust mainstream media anymore. And this is why... Uh, mainstream media outlets are losing readership by the day. They have collapsed. Many print editions of uh, magazines have gone out of print. Newspaper subscriptions are collapsing all across the mainstream media with USA Today, Washington Post, New York Times, and uh, many others. But where are those people going? Well, they're going to the alternative media, uh, which Natural News is, of course, one of the leading organizations of alternative media. Alternative media is growing by leaps and bounds. For example, as I'm recording this, we just surpassed 1.3 million Facebook fans. That's just on Facebook alone. It doesn't even count our, our, our web traffic, our email subscribers, our Twitter traffic, and many other things, our radio network, and so on. Uh, we reach millions of people every, every month. And uh, more and more people are coming to natural news and other alternative media sources because they, it, it's like actually getting nutrition for your brain instead of getting processed junk food, which is what the mainstream media is dishing out in terms of information. If you want corporate manufactured food, you go buy the, the packaged food at the grocery store or McDonald's or somewhere like that. If you want corporate packaged information, you turn on CNN or MSNBC. So if that's a life that you you choose, then 
I'm sorry, but uh, your, your, your brain is being poisoned by that information. And so uh, you need to be able to detox your brain in the same way that you detox your body from the junk food and get in some fresh, new, raw information in the same way that you would get fresh, raw produce through juicing or eating fresh salads or fresh produce. That's what you get with the alternative media like Natural News. You're getting fresh, you know, enzymatically active, uh, fully mineralized, in-depth information and news about the real world where you're going to get honest information about, you know, mercury and vaccines, for example, which the mainstream media absolutely will not even talk about, which just shows you what a fraud they are, a complete fraud that they would stand by and say nothing while pregnant women and children are being injected with mercury by the medical profession. Come on. Uh, any organization that would stay silent about that has obviously sold out to pharmaceutical interests, and that's just about every mainstream media organization in the country, which is why people don't trust them anymore, and it's why they are, they're collapsing. So uh, also just any discussion about natural cures. You know, let's talk about cherries being able to treat arthritis pain and reduce inf inflammation or cherry juice actually eliminating gout or cabbage juice curing stomach ulcers or vitamin D preventing and even reversing many types of cancer or how to reverse and cure yourself of type 2 diabetes by changing your diet and getting healthy omega-3 oils and eliminating high fructose corn syrup, things like that. These kinds of discussions are almost never found in the mainstream media because, again, they are beholden to corporate interests. So if you turn on mainstream media, you're poisoning your brain. And it's, it's just as bad as being poisoned with lead. Lead makes you stupid. So does watching CNN. CNN is so, so fake, they actually just staged uh, many of their broadcasts. We saw this in the Gulf War, the first uh, Iraq War. They, they set up a fake set, and they literally staged. They were in Atlanta. They set up a set, and they acted like they were in Saudi Arabia, and they acted like missiles were going off around. It was like a bad Saturday Night Live uh, skit, but they actually broadcast it as, as real news. And, in fact, if you want to search for that video on YouTube... Search for CNN Charles Jaco, J-A-C-O, Charles Jaco, CNN fake broadcast. Um, you can find it on YouTube. It's absolutely fascinating to watch it. And they had a fake siren uh, where they said there was like a gas, a gas a, a bomb had gone off. And so there were two guys on camera. One of the guys grabs a gas mask, puts it on. The guy next to him grabs a helmet. And puts on the helmet. So they're both standing there, one of them with a gas mask and the other with a helmet, thinking that they're showing the audience how bad it is over there in Saudi Arabia when they're actually on a fake set in Atlanta. It's so hilarious. And it just typifies the kind of complete theater, which is CNN. And, and really mo most, most mainstream uh, broadcast news sources. So watch out uh, about the information that, y that you're getting uh, make sure you don't fall for those mainstream uh, sources because they will poison your brain. Now, another source of poisoning your brain and actually reducing your cognitive function, especially reducing your ability to think creatively and to be innovative and to think for yourself, is, uh, believe it or not, your friends and peers. Uh, depends on your friends and peers, obviously. If you have healthy friends, they are people who will encourage you to think independently, to be creative to try new things, to learn new things, to explore new things. Those are the kinds of friends that you want to have. But some people have toxic friends. And by that, I mean friends who will put them down, talk them out of things, and actually suppress their self-image. Sometimes friends are jealous of anything that you might try to do that would show them up. Believe it or not, a lot of people hang out with people that make them feel like dirt um, they do it because that's a circle that, it, that they feel accepted in for some reason, but it's also a circle of friends that keeps them down. And too often when people have great ideas and they, they want to pursue an expanded life experience, they might talk about doing interesting things. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hike up to Machu Picchu in Peru and uh, learn about the Inca civilization. And their friends would say, What? You're crazy. You can't hike through dead woman's pass at 14,000 feet. 
And if you if you allow yourself to be poisoned, you might say, oh, gosh, you're right. I shouldn't even dream. And you go back to playing bingo with your friends or whatever you do. Uh, and that's just not acceptable because you can. You can you can hike through Dead Woman's Pass at uh, 14,000 feet. Uh, it just takes a little bit of training, maybe some high-altitude training. <laughs> maybe if you live in Colorado, you're already doing high-altitude training. But uh, you can do whatever you really set your mind to. And, and if you've got good supportive friends and family, which is not as common as you might think, then they will, they will support your ideas and they will support your creativity, your innovation, and your original thinking. So that's, you really have to make an effort to surround yourself with those kind of people who can support your dreams and, uh, and, and your ambitions. And, uh, and, and All right, so talking more about poisons of your brain, let's talk about food additives. The uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock invented a term called excitotoxins. And this, as he describes it, is a class of molecules, food additives, that overexcite the neurons of your brain to the point of killing them. Uh, these are taste enhancers that are used to chemically alter your perception of foods to make you think, to trick you into thinking they're more savory or more fresh or more sweet than they really are. So these, this is chemical trickery. And the two most common ingredients that accomplish this are MSG, or monosodium glutamate, and aspartame, which is, of course, uh, the, the chemical known as NutraSweet. Uh, MSG is a, uh, a chemical taste enhancer. It's, um, it's made by the, I think it's the Ajinomoto company um, in Japan and many other companies in China and Taiwan and so on. Uh, it's, it's used in a lot of Chinese food. And uh, I've come to find out, because, uh, you know, I used to live in uh, Asia, I've come to find out that Chinese people are immune to the toxic effects of MSG uh, because of a genetic uh, genetic difference. They they don't get the headaches. They don't get the um, the toxicity of MSG. But um, people of European descent and of uh, African descent are far more vulnerable to MSG toxicity, and they will get uh, flushes. They will get headaches. They will get confusion. Uh, they can even have mood disorders from consuming MSG. Now the the. The challenge with this is that food manufacturers are primarily in the business of uh, lying to you about what you're buying and eating. And they know that the public doesn't want to eat MSG because most people are aware of the damaging effects of this chemical. So they've found ways to hide MSG in other names, other ingredients that they list on the label. And therefore, they can claim, well, we're disclosing the MSG in our product, but they don't call it MSG. They call it something else. So here are the things to watch out for on foods in order to avoid poisoning your brain with this excitotoxin. The number one uh, ingredient that contains MSG is yeast extract. Yeast extract. Now, it's not the same as just yeast, which is used in bread. This is yeast extract. It's also sometimes called autolyzed, um, autolyzed proteins, hydrolyzed proteins, or Torula yeast, T-O-R-U-L-A, uh, Torula yeast. You will find yeast extract in the vast majority of processed foods at the grocery store, everything from gravy mixes to canned soups to uh, children's foods to so-called natural snack chips that claim to have no MSG, but they have yeast extract instead, which still contains free glutamate. So you actually have to read ingredients labels. You will also find yeast extract in a whole lot of vegetarian products, including veggie burgers and veggie sausage and uh, lots of products that cater to vegans and vegetarians. And this is one of the warnings that I've tried to repeat over the years that you can kill yourself eating toxic vegetarian and vegan foods if they're processed. Uh, the vegetarian lifestyle, which has always been touted as being more healthy, is supposed to be based on eating fresh produce, folks. Not eating factory processed veggie burgers laced with hidden forms of monosodium glutamate. 
So, um, oh, and also, by the way, veggie cheese, vegetarian cheese is made primarily with milk protein, <laughs> casein, uh, which I found, I find really hilarious because I see uh, vegetarians who are um, not supposed to be eating dairy and then they're buying this veggie cheese and the number one ingredient is a dairy protein and they don't even know it. So they're eating dairy proteins all day long. And it, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a little, little sad actually, but uh, you got to look for this stuff. So you have to know what you're eating. And for the most part, stop eating factory made foods. Uh, so anyway, look, look for all these hidden forms. Again, hydrolyzed vegetable proteins, autolyzed, that's A U T O L Y Z E D. And uh, anything that is a yeast extract can uh, contain MSG or free glutamate. The next thing to look for is aspartame. As I already mentioned, the NutraSweet. Aspartame is the other excitotoxin. Obviously, it's a chemical taste sweetener. Uh, it's designed to trick your tongue into thinking that you're eating sugar when you're actually not. Uh, a lot of people eat aspartame because they think they want to be on a sugar-free diet. Uh, a lot of diabetics have been falsely told that if they want to uh, control the diabetes, they should eat a lot of aspartame, NutraSweet, or sucralose, which is another um, kind of fake sugar. Uh, this is completely false information. Uh, aspartame is very harmful for diabetics for a number of reasons, but um, I including the fact that aspartame breaks down at certain temperatures into a variety of chemical compounds, including formaldehyde, a... A tissue preservative and uh, formic acid as well. So um, aspartame has been linked to uh, seizures and blurred vision and uh, all kinds of neurological type of problems, which is why if you want to protect your cognitive function, you have, you, you have to absolutely stop consuming aspartame in all its forms. So if you're drinking diet soda, in my opinion, you're poisoning your brain with every can of diet soda that you consume. So stop it. Stop it immediately. You'd be much better off drinking uh, iced tea or something of that matter, lemonade even. Just don't, don't drink uh, lemonade sweetened with aspartame or sucralose. I think you're better off having straight cane sugar, not processed, but full spectrum like evaporated cane juice crystals is much healthier for you than any of these artificial chemical sweeteners. I, I would rather just eat, you know, honey or, or cane juice than, um, than aspartame or, or sucralose. Uh, look for these artificial sweeteners on lots of, lots of foods where you might not suspect it. So anything that says sugar-free is almost certainly going to be sweetened with aspartame or uh, sucralose. Anything that says it's for diabetics tends to be sweetened with these chemicals, uh, which is why diabetics who eat these foods never cure their diabetes, by the way. You ever notice that? It doesn't help them to eat these, to eat these foods. Um, we could talk about diabetes in another program of how, how to reverse it. Um, type 2 diabetes is very straightforward to reverse in, in most cases. Uh, watch out for children's foods like drink mixes and Kool-Aids and punches and things like that. Most of them are sweetened with aspartame or other uh, chemical sweeteners. So you really have to watch out for that. In terms of, uh, since I did mention tea, by the way, watch out for green tea being contaminated with fluoride. There is a lot of fluoride in green tea. And I found that, uh, for example, I tested many brands of uh, English, English breakfast uh, flavor mix, you know, tea, tea bags. And uh, most of them were quite heavily contaminated with lead. Um, I intend to do more experiments in the future about looking at how much lead gets extracted uh, based on the steeping time in the water. But I haven't had time to complete those experiments yet, so I can't give you that information. But um, the these teas are, are often contaminated, so you really want to watch on the teas to make sure it's a clean source that's been tested for heavy metals so that you don't get fluorine and, and lead and cadmium and, and other contaminants uh, in your tea. And finally, I want to talk about so-called brain stimulants and these, I don't know, what are they called? Like five-hour energy shots or something? Three-hour energy shots? I don't know. <laughs> the hours keep increasing. Uh, you find these little shot bottles sold at convenience stores. 
and uh, the the displays at the grocery store. Uh, these are just caffeine shots, and this the same advice goes for things like Monster Soda and, or Monster Energy, and all of these drinks like Red Bull. Uh, I strongly encourage you to to avoid any of these caffeine based stimulant drinks. Uh, for one primary reason is because the caffeine is isolated. So you'd be much healthier actually drinking a cup of coffee made from real coffee than just drinking these uh, basically sugar caffeinated uh, water shots, which use an isolated laboratory uh, derived caffeine with uh, sugar and, and usually some citric acid and flavors and things like that. Uh, I think that's very dangerous. I think that, um, Using these to attempt to attain some kind of mental focus is a, a very dangerous shortcut attempt. Um, I would only use it as a very last resort. Let's say you're a you're a road trucker, and you feel like your life is in danger. You're so tired. You have two more hours on the road to go. You absolutely have to stay awake for your own safety. Okay, I could see doing this. Um, taking supplemental caffeine, but you'd be much better off to actually uh, use coffee instead in that scenario, in my opinion. And the reason is because these these stimulants, uh, because they're isolated, they don't come with all the other phytochemicals and phytonutrients that normally would provide a full spectrum uh, assortment of uh, alkaloids that your body could use in a variety of ways. When you have isolated chemicals, whether they're in the form of pharmaceuticals or dietary supplements, they have an increased risk of danger. Um, full spectrum foods and herbs and supplements are far safer by their very nature. Uh, so because these, these energy shots are isolated chemicals, I, I think they are a higher risk. You have a higher risk of adverse cardiovascular effects. There have been deaths that have been linked to some of these energy drinks. Uh, although I'm not sure if they have been uh, scientifically proven to have been caused by them, but there is a suspicion that that may be the case. There have been many medical professionals who've spoken out against energy drinks uh, for this very reason. But another more important reason is because when you consume these, and if you rely on these to try to create cognitive focus, you deplete your adrenal glands. And you also you create a situation where you need more stimulation in the future to bring back the same level of focus and you create a physiological addiction to the caffeine. All of these are really bad news. It means that if, if you continue to pursue this, this route, you're going to need more caffeine to get the same effect, just like, uh, drugs, I guess, um, heroin addicts, for example, need more and more heroin to get the same high or, or, or rush or whatever they got from heroin the first time they used it. Um, so the addiction is also there. Caffeine addiction can be very, very strong. Uh, I've never been addicted to any substance, so I, I don't know from personal experience how tough a caffeine addiction is to, to kick, but I've heard it's pretty bad and you can get the shakes and you can get uh, headaches, I think are the most common side effects. Uh, from a caffeine addiction. So uh, withdrawing from caffeine is going to be a real pain in the ass one day if you end up um, dependent on the substance as a way to uh, attain mental focus. Since as a way to uh, attain mental focus. Since as a way... <laughs>
not knowing all the dangers of high fructose corn syrup and phosphoric acid, of course, as I know today. But uh, I, I didn't need to be uh, snorting somebody's prescription medication <laughs> in order to pass a final exam. Uh, I'm really concerned about today's today's students. But anyway, I did want to have that discussion here because I know th this whole thing is about natural genius. This is about enhancing your cognitive function. But there there are some avenues that, that I think are very, very dangerous to try to pursue. And I, I, I think that any any ingestion uh, of um, uh, laboratory-made psychoactive substances like that, I think, should be avoided. I think it's very, very dangerous. Uh, many of these substances can be addictive. They have terrible side effects. And frankly, if you follow everything else in this course, those substances shouldn't be necessary. And in fact, just as proof of that, I'm going to leave you with this with this thought. And uh, everybody in the natural health industry knows that what I'm about to tell you here is completely true. Um, I myself have never used any psychoactive substances. Uh, I, I've never smoked marijuana. I've never done cocaine or, or crack or heroin. I've never taken an ADHD drug. I've never taken uh, an antidepressant drug. I've never taken, I mean, I don't even know what else is out there, anti-anxiety drugs. Statin drug, I, I've, I've never done any of those things. I've never even smoked marijuana. Um, and I don't drink alcohol by choice. I've, I've tried alcohol in the past, but it just wasn't something that I enjoyed. So I, just by choice, I choose not to consume it. I don't have anything against anybody who does. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm around a lot of people who are drinking socially, and that's, that's usually just fine. So um, I'm not against uh, alcohol. I'm not even against uh, people who want to smoke a little weed in their own home uh, privately, uh, I'm not against that at all. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm against the prohibition, the criminalization of uh, plant-based substances. Um, I'm against, uh, I'm very much against that criminalization element. You know, the war on drugs is a complete failure. But I've never in my entire life, I've never resorted to the use of psychoactive substances or illegal drugs or anything of that kind in order to um, attain any kind of a mental focus. The closest I've ever got to this in my lifetime was drinking coca tea in Peru, which was part of the accepted practice when you were hiking uh, through a dead woman's pass at 14,000 feet on the way to Machu Picchu, which I did. And um, coca tea is simply the leaf of the coca plant that is steamed or you know steeped into a cup of hot water like uh, any, any kind of tea. And uh, coca tea is not psychoactive. It is not a, a drug. It is not a refined, isolated cocaine. It, it tastes kind of bitter. It gives you some endurance. Uh, it's kind of like green tea, a similar effect, or, or a yerba mate type of effect. Uh, people use it in Peru. They grow it in Peru. They grow it in Colombia. They grow it in uh, Ecuador. They they use it as a, a staple of of their diet. It has many amazing uh, medicinal nutrients in it, as well as um, the the endurance enhancing effects of the the tea leaf constituents. So that's the closest I've ever gotten to any any of this stuff. And um, all I felt was some endurance to be able to keep climbing that mountain at, at fourteen thousand feet. There, there was no withdrawal, no side effects. Nothing weird happened, never craved the tea, nothing like that. It's, it, it's, a, it's a simple, you know, a simple natural substance made from a plant that, that's indigenous to the area. So um, uh, all the things that, that, that I've been able to do to be, to be blessed with in my life, all the accomplishments of, of running the laboratory, inventing some amazing dietary supplements and and being fortunate enough to to have grown one of the largest natural health websites in the world, um, all of these things were accomplished by using our natural abilities combined with eliminating toxins and uh, enhancing cognitive function using healthy minerals, healthy nutrients, superfoods, things like that. I did not have to resort to any any artificial. Um, uh, psychoactive substances, prescription drugs, medications, recreational drugs, street drugs, nothing of the kind. And uh, I never planned to. I have no desire 
to experiment with such substances. People have offered me them from time to time throughout my life, and I've always politely said, uh, no thanks, I, I really don't have any need for that, but you smoke away, buddy, <laughs> you know, because I, I'm not interfering with anybody else's deal. But uh, this is not my thing. Uh, I encourage you to uh, do what is right for you. Use the, the power that you have in your brain right now to investigate everything that I've mentioned here in this course. Stay away from potentially dangerous substances. Do your best to eliminate the toxins that are all, that very often polluting, uh, polluting our bodies and our minds. And make a special effort to increase your uptake of those helpful nutrients that I mentioned, such as selenium and uh, iodine and sulfur, which can have a very powerful positive effect on your cognitive function. Finally, once you achieve that high cognitive function, use your gifts for the betterment of humanity. This is something that I believe in with all my heart and all my soul. I've used my gifts, the things that I've been blessed with, to help humanity, to spread the truth, to uplift other people, to invent supplements that can protect people from radiation contamination, for example, to protect children from uh, toxic heavy metals, things like that. When you have attained high level of, a high level of cognitive function, it is very important that you use this for the betterment of humanity and not just for your own selfish gain. It's actually pretty easy in our world today to make a lot of money if that's your only goal. But it, is, it should not be what you aspire to do as your final uh, um, um, milestone of achievement. Uh, that should really only be the starting point. Once you make a lot of money, do something useful with it. And I don't mean just buying a fancy car. I mean finding ways to give back to society to make a better world so that when you leave this place, it's hopefully better because you were in it. Have a positive impact on the people around you. Help uplift and awaken others. Um, help, help us end suffering. Help us express compassion to recognize other living beings all across our world as being conscious living beings, including animals, including ecosystems, including plants. Uh, understand that we are conscious beings with free will, with experiences, memories, and non-physical minds. Uh, understand that the animals that we interact with are also conscious beings who also have their own memories, their own social structures, their own families. Uh, their own awareness. So think about, think about these concepts. Think about the philosophy of the world around us. Think about what is the meaning of life. And hopefully with the information in this course, you will be able to enhance the depth of your cognitive questioning of the nature of reality around us all. And you will be able to hopefully better understand it uh, so that you can uh, contribute to it in a meaningful and positive way. If you do that, then you make me uh, very humbled and very honored to have uh, contributed in some small way to your effort by recording this course, Natural Genius. And I thank you for your time. If you'd like to learn more and follow more uh, from my work and my investigations, just go to naturalnews.com where we have news stories published every single day. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Take care.